Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and I'm playing Dungeon Universalis. Now we're still in the mission where we try to kill the large creature. We, we don't really know what it actually is. Probably a giant. And right now we're moving here around the corner. Everything is in darkness. But a little bit we can spot here at the end three great spiders approaching. Now, I don't really think we can still somehow um, win the, the achievement track. We only have three points while the dark player already has 13. Uh, but okay, that, that, that doesn't matter too much right now. So let's start the new turn here, and of course this goes then up again. So one more turn for him, or for her. And now let's see who wins the initiative. I think we have a plus one modifier. For the small um, skill, and that's pretty much it. So let's see. Okay, so we clearly win that. That's uh, pretty good, and that's a six and a five. I wonder if we can win this thing. If you could do the, the caught by surprise rule here, I gotta check that. So the rule actually shows that when both um, dice have a higher value than the intelligence of the creature, and none of them is a one, like this one, the creature would be caught by surprise, or one of them, so that means we could have turned it in a way that we want it. However, um, because uh, this only applies to creatures who are, I think, six or less squares away. So they are so far away that it doesn't work. But still we have the initiative, which is very valuable, I guess. So, and by the way, I missed a, kind of an important rule and it might have had an effect in my last battle when a creature is down to a single health point it is wounded which means it will lose um, it basically has a minus one to all its modifiers except uh, armor and vitality I guess but all the others pretty much go down. And for large creatures, it's a it's a five. So if if, if large creatures are down to or huge, I think it's huge creatures. If they are down to five wounds. Uh, then they that counts as wounded. Okay, cool. So now let's start the battle. We won the initiative, so I'm going to use my crossbow and shoot the first spider here the the thing the, the, the spider is really far away it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten spaces away therefore i'm gonna have a modifier of minus three that is a lot um any additional modifiers I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think that's pretty much everything. So minus three. I got a shooting value of five, so I'm going to need an eight to hit. That is not that easy. But I have that. Look at that. That's a nine. Very, very good. Good start. I do three damage because or three damage dice 
because of the small um, modifier here uh, and I can subtract one from the armor so it's a three here so let's see yeah okay we got two hits that's something but it's not that great for the first spider here and then I guess I'm gonna change the crossbow and grab my short bow okay nice okay I'm, I'm simply gonna move the other characters and let these guys come closer that might give me an advantage so I want to move with her first and I'm gonna move here and the dwarf moves one two three spaces I guess And so I'm considering playing the God Crush Them spell, but because it's one of these very powerful spells, I can only play it um, in a turn where I didn't move. And because there was no line of sight toward the creatures, I couldn't play it this turn. So therefore, I'm going to move here. And now the spiders will approach. We got a roll. And there's no special power card coming into play. So uh, let's see. There is a special rule for this one because maybe it is. Just, just let's see here. I think yeah, it's wounded. And it's in line of sight of the same or larger size enemies. So this creature here must perform a courage test and then we'll see if it will attack. So it needs a six, which it has. And therefore it will now start moving. And I guess it will run. So let's see. If, okay, so it can run up to 12 spaces, but it cannot enter my melee range. When you're running, that's not possible. So it will simply move one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. It will move right here. And that's pretty much it. And a defensive not shot is in this case actually not possible simply because there was no attack um, planned by the creature. It just approached me, but it didn't attack a specific guy. And the others will simply do the same, I guess. Okay, I'm just rolling if there would be a blunder or something, but or if they would roll very low, they could not run that far, but that is not the case. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I guess it will actually move here. And then the last creature, okay, will move. Probably here. I guess they all move as close as possible toward me. Okay, so now the next turn starts and I think I actually want to play the God Crush Them spell on these guys. It is really tempting to do it. So I'm gonna attack this space here. Gotta roll a die. Now I'm lost in the dark. That means I got a minus one to all attributes. So I only have an intelligence of four. So I need a six to cast that spell successfully. 
and I did that and it was even a, a critical so that means if the spill does uh, if the spell doesn't backfire with I, uh, I have to check that now on a one it would so I was lucky here was a two so I do a lot of damage now so I'm gonna place these two here and we can roll now well, I'm gonna place only one here the other one goes away just to indicate that I used this spell once we got five dice against the armor, so we start with this spider here. <laughs> okay, now this guy is clearly dead, and that gives us a point. And now I'm gonna do the one next to it. Okay, that was not good at all. So this goes only two hits. That was really a poor roll. against this one and the last one that was much better I think these were three hits yeah these were three hits but it's not dead but this time it is wounded so that's pretty good and let's see now the scout will use the short bow and shoot well I ah, it's a little it's hard to tell is there line of sight I think there is um, yeah I think I want to shoot I think I want to shoot I'm not sure if this actually touches. Then I have to move one space and I want to avoid that. I don't think it does. No, I don't think it does. So I think I can shoot here. I think that works. And use my short bow. Hmm. On the other hand, I think I want to shoot this creature here because chances are higher that I will kill it if I hit it. I've got a minus one modifier here because it's four spaces away. So that means I need a six to hit. And I have that, very good. I do two damage dice, one is subtracted, so I need a four and the creature is dead. Awesome, fantastic. So there we go and now the dwarf, one, two, three, he can now finish this creature here with a successful attack, but Huh, it's not over yet. So, I mean, yeah, he better is successful here. So let's see. Ah, uh, that. Okay, let's see. This is a seven here. Okay, that's a seven against a seven. So let's see. Maybe I, I, I think it might be good enough. I got a combat strength of four. The creature only has a combat strength of three. Uh, so... Any negative modifiers? I don't think so. So yeah, I think that was a that was a good roll for me. I was lucky here, and that means I do a lot of damage now. Uh, I got a strength of four plus two, so we're talking six dice here, and the armor is reduced by one. Okay, so that is good enough to kill the beast and that was a solid battle here really good but of course we had to spend this extremely valuable spell but I mean we have one more shot with it 
So now the next turn starts and first I want to, hmm, let me see. I think first I want to reload the crossbow with this guy here. And then I'm going to move one, two, three, four spaces. I don't want to take too many chances here. Don't want to leave the safe zone for now. And then she will search again for loot um, from the killed creatures. So we can roll three dice. Okay, nothing there. And then she can move one, two, three, four, five spaces, and eventually the dwarf. He could actually I think I want to run. He needs a strength potion. I should have given that to Martha. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So first I'm gonna run with him. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can run right here. Ah, shit. Okay, we go into the next turn. Just want to play it really safe here. So now, Crapley will move. And I will move one, two, three, four, five spaces. And then I want to give the strength potion to the dwarf, but I have to do some counting here. Okay, I, so I give the strength potion to the dwarf, who is now one above his carrying limit. So when it's his turn, he's got to give uh, the, the scout the healing potion. Or maybe the beer, we'll see. Maybe the beer is, might be even better here. And so, yeah, technically I could do that right away. So I will. These are quick actions, so you can easily do that. One, two, three. I want to be in position here. And now uh, it's her one two three four five six I guess so then next turn okay so again we have here the app I'm curious if we will now see the final room or if there's something big in between so uh, first we Gonna move with this guy, obviously, and I think a new turn starts. If I'm not mistaken here, I'm not sure though, I think so. And then we're gonna reveal the section. Uh, okay, that doesn't seem to be the final room, but it's a big one. Uh, well, it's not, no, it's technically, I think it's not a big room. So. What does that mean? Ah, oh, we can search this room for treasures. Hmm, interesting. Maybe we should do so. So, let's find the tile and set up this room. Okay, so this is the tile. It's not perfectly clear for me if it's inside or outside, which is important because of the darkness issue, uh, because there are these you know, there is vegetation here. Um, but there are also walls. I guess it's inside. Uh, but yeah, as I said, it's not so clear. Um, so therefore, the rule, uh, the, the app shows two of these arrows here. But I think there's only one. It's just a single. So I'm going to place only one here. And these are no doors, obviously. These are just uh, 
he had, I don't know, just simple doorways or whatever. So I'm gonna, hmm. Let's see, so this was my action now. I wonder, yeah, I think, oh, first we gotta, of course we gotta roll if we can reveal a new creature. Oh, that didn't count. And yes, the cards say that's supposed to happen. So we draw our last card here. And that says special creature. Okay, so um, use this card as soon as a character reveals an unexplored section. The dark player will spawn an elite or champion level creature in the newly discovered section. Okay, roll 3d6 to determine the extra skills the creature has according to its profile and pay for their cost. So we'll see if this is even possible to do for this guy, because he's down to three points. So first we gotta see now how expensive a special creature would be. Uh, so there is a special creature, no. So the minimum would be four points, so he doesn't have that. Therefore, he's gotta discard the card and gives him four additional points. Now, interestingly, now there are no more creature cards. Um, so, I think, I gotta check the rules again, but I think, I mean, definitely the deck is not reshuffled. So, he's not gonna be able to draw another one of these cards. So, the only option how other, other creatures could come into play is through these special cards from, from the other decks, like the Reinforcement, for example, but one of them is already gone too. So it's, uh, that's kind of interesting. So therefore, no creatures in this room, and we're simply gonna move to the next room. Now my, my, my feeling tells me that the big room will, down, will be down here, but I'm not sure. So first, um, hmm, I think I simply enter this room like, one, two, three, four, and move this area here, and this guy moves one, two, three, four, and I can move further if I, if I run, okay, five, six. So I can move here, and we start another turn, so I mean this is, Okay, this is pretty ridiculous. Now he has the option to search for treasure. The others could have done it too, but they're not that good. So um, I think I want to try it. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to move here and then I'm going to roll two dice to search for treasure. So let's see, um, I need a, I gotta check that, I gotta check how that actually works. Okay, so this searching for treasure is not possible when you already moved. So therefore I'm gonna run and I'm gonna move right here, gotta roll if I can move that far, but I'm pretty sure I can, yep. So I'm gonna move right here and uh, then I'm gonna use the next action to search for treasure. It doesn't really make a difference actually, I could have... Mm. You cannot search for treasure anymore, by the way, once you found the main room. So you cannot try to save time, run through the areas, and then um, when you fought the boss and or when you found the main room and the turn counter stops, you cannot go back and then start searching all the rooms. That simply won't work. So we gotta do it now, if we wanna do it at all, and I think I want to. Okay, so the, the time goes on now, and now I'm gonna search here. Gotta do a perception test, and 
I got the eye, eagle eye, which gives me a plus one, a plus two. So I need an eight. It's hard to do. Hmm. Don't want to try it anyway. I think I'm going to try it. Oh boy, that was bad. And I also got to check. So nothing happens basically, but I got to check if there are any obstacles in this room. And there are. So I triggered a trap when I switched. And let's see what we get. Oh boy, that sucks. That's an ambush. That's not good at all. So that means um, use this card during the exploration turn. Place creatures for up to six points in an already explored section, empty of creatures, and adjacent to one where there is at least one character from the group of heroes. So they're going to come from here. Uh, roll for initiative in the usual way, even if the creatures and characters do not have visual contact with each other. Caught by surprise rule will not apply after the initiative roll. Okay, so that means he's going to spend again six points, so he's down to one. And we got to check who's going to come up. No, actually, we don't know how much he has to spend. It depends on, on the value here that we... Okay, that's a five, I guess. So, he has six points, and we have three giant ants. Now, I don't have ants, so we're going to go with the spiders again. But, of course, I mean, they just represent the ants. And... Because it's again a corridor, they will actually, I think, again come from the furthest point away, but I gotta check that. Okay, so these are the giant ants. It looks weird. Uh, I would not recognize this. I would not even, ah, now I see it. Yeah, okay, fortunately, they are not as numerous as their tiny relatives. Their jaws are very powerful, capable of breaking any shield. Okay, so... Uh, they will basically move the same way as... Uh, or they will be placed in the same way as the... Uh, as the spiders in a corridor from the very end of the corridor. And they, so for all, all the last section. And we got to do an initiative roll here. Even if we're not in line of sight. So I guess we got a simple plus one modifier. Oh no, maybe not. You know, actually, I think because this guy is closest to them, uh, we don't have a modifier at all. Uh, he doesn't have the plus one perception. But we managed to uh, to win this, and that means, yeah, we have the ability to start here. So that means we start another turn. Now the thing is, I want to. I don't want to spend. <clears throat> I don't want to spend the, the, my, my spell. That would kind of suck. I want to avoid doing that. I want to... But on the other hand... I would love to save the spell for the... For the giant. So let's see. I mean, these guys... They are pretty tough. That's that's the problem. They have, they don't have a special ability like poisoners or something like that, but they have five life points. That's quite a bit. A solid um, combat value, and also a good um, a 
good armor and they can do a lot of damage here uh, and they also have a shield breaking it well that doesn't matter but but they can do a lot of damage five dice is pretty painful so that's not so easy um, I don't like that idea uh, I don't like the idea of getting attacked by them but hmm so here's the thing, I guess, first I'm going to run with, uh, with the scout, okay, I can only move up to nine spaces, but that's going to be good enough, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm going to move back here, ready to shoot one of these, with my crossbow, but I'm gonna wait until they are closer, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah, I have to because I ran, so otherwise I couldn't have I couldn't have done it anyway. Um, so I think I'm also gonna move her back. Do I? That's the thing, I'm not even sure if I wanna actually leave the room. I'm considering standing him here at the door so that I don't have to fight as many creatures at the same time. Hmm. But then again, if I, if I wait here at the door, I might lose one activation with him and I don't want to do that. So I guess uh, I'm going to move her one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to move her here. And this guy moves simply here, I guess. Okay, uh, so that was it. And now these guys activate. And we got a roll. Okay, they, they are allowed to draw a power card. They still got one die left here. Or one, uh, one point left. <laughs> okay, there go, come the reinforcements. Now technically I think that's a good thing that this card was drawn now. He's not allowed to play it, obviously. He can discard it though. And that gives him six points. So he's again back to seven. He's got a ton of reinforcement points because of these cards or, or of these uh, reserve points. But luckily now these two cards are gone and there's only one, I think there might be one ambush still in there. Otherwise all the creature cards are gone by now. And now these guys activate and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they cannot reach us, therefore they will simply run. And we go with the first creature. Okay, so it can run up to eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, seven. But it cannot go into my range here. And then we come to the next one. Okay. Pretty much the same, I guess it moves here. And the last one, as long as it doesn't roll a double one. Okay. So I guess this one moves here. And now we are allowed to start our turn. So this goes up again. It doesn't matter anymore. So I'm gonna shoot now with my crossbow one of these uh, the, the, this creature here oh boy was that bad that was a blunder shit that was horrible so that means actually I dropped the weapon and I even have to check it might even break so on a you know what? It is even possible that I m hit this. I think I might have even hit the dwarf here. Because he's standing in the line of fire here technically. or Not, not directly, but he's right adjacent to it. So I might have hit the dwarf. Oh boy. Yeah, that's actually true. We hit the, we hit the dwarf. When we shot here, we kind of fucked it up with the, with the crossbow. And... Uh, <laughs> 
uh, no, so we dropped the crossbow. It might even break. On a one to three, the crossbow breaks. So it is not unlikely that this could happen. And it did. Oh boy. So this, this thing is broken now. And uh, that means that the weapon lies on the ground broken. I think we could pick it up and and kind of bring it to to a blacksmith to repair it but i'm not even sure if i if i would do that so anyway so the weapon lies here now on the ground i think i'm not sure if it actually does lie here or maybe here i gotta i gotta check that but actually i think i didn't drop the weapon uh i think that only happens in melee i think this thing is simply destroyed it, it something I don't know, the mechanics somehow broke or something like that. So that was really, really bad. And we hit the dwarf, which is even worse. So I got to roll um, three dice. And I got a minus one for the armor of the dwarf. So he only has a value of four. Oh boy. Okay, so these are two hits against the dwarf. Great. Okay, that is not good at all. Okay, um, yeah, it sucks. So what do we do now? I wanted to attack with a dwarf now. I'm not sure if I still want to do that. Um, now that changes actually things quite a bit. You know, I'm considering using again the God Crush Them spell because uh, yeah, that was obviously a, a very bad development here. And that is probably a, quite an understatement. Okay, so here is what I'm planning to do. And it's a little bit... Nah. Yeah. I think I'm going to do that. I wanted to save that, the Greek fire. But I think I want to use it right now because it's pretty powerful. It also affects one space and all the adjacent spaces. So uh, the sorceress will move one space right here. Will she? Will she even do so? Maybe she won't. Uh, I think I think I will. I think I will risk this move. And then I'm going to throw... The, the problem is we actually need quite a good... I'm pretty bad in throwing. That's my problem here. So... And I'm lost in the dark. So that means we got a minus one. And I moved. But when you throw, you don't get the modifier for moving when you only move one space. But I need an eight to be successful here. That's a lot. So, hmm. yeah, that really sucks. Do I really want to take that risk? Go for an eight? I don't know. But here's the thing. If I use this thing in the main room, there will be no darkness. So, you know, actually, I think, again, I'm going to use the spell. Uh, so... I got four mana left. I'm going to use the spell because then I'm only going to need a, a six, which is clearly better. And actually, if I cannot cast this thing, I don't have to spend the mana. So that is, that is, this thing is too risky, I think, the Greek fire. Oh boy, is that bad. The second blunder in a row. Boy, is that bad. So here's the thing, actually, I think I was lucky here because I cannot use the spell. Because I'm not in line of sight, and in addition I cannot move when I use the spell. So therefore, uh, I think, uh, yeah, this has no consequences because I simply could not use the spell. 
Well, I was lucky here, but uh, it doesn't help me to solve the problem right now. So, I'm not sure how to handle this. That's a, it's a pretty bad situation for, for me. I might simply go for it and attack the dwarf. It's a... Uh, Uh, and attack one of these spiders, but yeah, I think I want to try that. So, oh boy, this is not good at all. It's it's pretty horrible what we see here. So yeah, I think I move here, and I want to attack this spider here. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, that was good. So the dwarf rolled much better and it's a critical. So maybe I have a chance, and it's an ant by the way, it's not a spider, I'm sorry. I might have a chance now with seven dice to actually kill the spider, which has now only a, an armor value of three, but it's not easy. Okay, but it is good enough. That was very, very good. We managed to kill the first spider with one big hit. And that was just amazing. Uh, the first aunt, damn it. Okay, great. That was good. So we go into the next turn, and now the spiders, will, uh, the aunt will activate, and we start with, with this one here. So it fights the dwarf. Okay, that's a six against an eight. I'm afraid that's not good. They both have a value of four. So yeah, it seems like this is a hit. So that means it's a critical hit, which, oh my goodness, this is really bad. This could kill the dwarf. Now the thing is, if this this might probably end the adventure. The thing is, if we have to to, to burn our fortune against these guys, uh, we cannot make it to the giant anymore. It's just too much. Um, I think we were super unlucky again here. So, but we'll see, it's not over yet. So we had six dice and... Uh, okay, that is horrible. That is, uh, that is a disaster. These are three hits. But uh, the thing is, maybe I'm lucky because I'm hardened. So on a one, on a four plus, this is reduced to one. Okay, so let's see. And it is, that was very, very important. I mean, that leaves us the chance that we could maybe still win the scenario otherwise it would have been over i guess now this guy moves and let's see who they're gonna attack okay so these vermins or anim uh, animals they ignore the equal distribution of attacks instead they simply go for the enemy with the lowest life points so that means they will also attack the dwarf And again, this seems to be a success. Um, now, it's interesting, do I want to spend that one fortune? I wanted to save fortune for the giant. So I really don't know, uh, it's a tough call. You know what, I think I want to spend one fortune here. I still have four, that helps me to avoid uh, the, the worst situations, but uh, so I can, I need a, a five and I have that. So at least this time, no damage for me. So now the heroes start again and hmm, yeah, the dwarf tries another attack obviously. 
and that was not good enough. Sadly, I think it was not good enough. Was it? Or maybe it was. No, it wasn't. The end has a higher agility than I do because I have that shitty chain mail. So therefore, um, that was not successful. God damn it. You know, here's the thing. I could throw the Greek fire at this guy and, you know, and let the dwarf take the hits, which is probably a pretty ridiculous idea, but... Hmm. I mean, what I could also try is... I could do a war dance now, and I think I want to do that. So, I'm gonna let her do a war dance, and actually, you know what? I think I forgot... Did I? No, I didn't. I think I forgot to roll that die once and nothing happened here. So I'm gonna do a war dance and hope my my guys get a little better. Okay, that was very good. Five turns, that's awesome. So uh, that did cost me one. But now they got a plus one uh, value and I should have done that earlier. That was so stupid because then he probably would have won that, right? That was just totally fuck up. Uh, so I'm gonna grab my short bow and I'm gonna shoot now at one of the spiders here. And that is a success. So let's see how much damage we can do. Uh, we got, well, only two dice. Okay, that's one hit. I mean, that's not too impressive, right? And again, it's the spiders, and we got to roll for the or the aunts, damn it! And we got to roll for that one. We got to do a courage test here, and maybe if we're lucky, it will run away. I was close, but uh, yeah, and it will attack the dwarf, obviously. But now I got a plus one modifier. I hope that gives me uh, some advantage. Okay, that was good. And now the other spider attacks. Ah, that is not good enough. Damn it. So again, we take five hits. Holy shit, this is not looking good at all. Oh boy, three damage. That will kill us if we do not roll a four plus. And we didn't. So, um, yeah, that's it. We're dead. However, we can spend one fortune to avoid that. But now we got to roll a five plus. And we did. And that was obviously awesome. So, no damage done here. Okay, and we enter the next turn now. And, hmm. Yeah, it's just uh, very, very bad. The whole situation is a total mess. I gotta fight on, I guess. I don't see any other options here. I have to fight on with the dwarf. Now I got a plus one modifier. Maybe that is good enough. I'm gonna try to attack again this spider here. And this time it was successful. Very, very good. And we can roll now for damage. We do six dice of damage. And it's a minus one of the armor, so, but we gotta be very lucky here. And of course we're not. <laughs> of course we roll total bad. So this is just two, um, two damage against the spider. That is not good at all. And now the scout will roll again, will shoot again another with his bow. That is a success, so he gets two dice, and that is one hit. Well, very, very slowly we do damage here, but... Hmm. 
Oh boy. That's a hard business here. And that's it, I guess. I don't know anything to do for the sorceress. So now it's again the two spiders. And we got a roll for. Okay, nothing happens here. Oh boy! An 11! Come on, this is ridiculous. This is so bad. <sighs> yeah, that's it. That's pretty much the end now, I guess. Um, I mean, maybe if I'm super lucky, the, the hardened could save me here. So we gotta roll again for the successes. Oh god. Okay, well, that wasn't so bad, actually. Th these are two hits. And uh, I'm going to roll, and on a four plus, it's only a single hit. And, yeah, so, oh boy, we're pretty much... Uh, now I'm, I'm wounded, by the way. So, uh, I got a minus one on all my modifiers, because now I'm in a very bad shape. And the second one will attack. And yeah, guess what? It's a hit because I'm wounded. Because I'm wounded. Otherwise it would not have been. Um, but uh, yeah, this is just too much now. So uh, yeah, that, that's it. Okay, um, I gotta, I don't know if I should re-roll that, it doesn't really matter that much anymore. Uh, we gotta end the scenario, we gotta move after this battle, and in the end, I mean, okay, I wanna survive, I will survive this if anyway, if I spend a two, if I spend two fortune, if I spend one poor fortune, um, it doesn't really matter that much. You know, I'm gonna spend one fortune, I guess. Try to reroll the attack dice here, but... Okay, so in this case, it's not... Uh, the hit didn't work out and he gets an extra point for the spent fortune. It's a shame, I would have loved to see the giant, but it's not gonna happen now anymore. We're just too... Um, we just took too many hits here and we were super unlucky. I mean, we had so many cards in here when it came to creatures and we've drawn them all. <laughs> That's just sick. Okay, but now we got to do some, uh, yeah, we got to change things a little bit. We have to take another approach, I guess. Um, in general, it might be still a good idea. I'm gonna try one, uh, so this goes down, I think it's already down to three turns. So I'm gonna do an attack with a dwarf. And I managed to, to do a hit. That means I get a lot of uh, points here, seven I guess. I got a minus one on my strength because I'm wounded. So I got seven dice with the critical. Okay, and again, it's a super bad roll, if you see that, it's so painful, but it, it, and it's not good enough. Actually, it's not good enough. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say, fuck it. I'm gonna spend another fortune, and I'm gonna re-roll that. Okay, this time it is. We managed to kill the spy, uh, the aunt, and, um, And now there's just one left. And I wanna try to, first I wanna try to shoot it with my short bow. And that is a success here in this case. And that means, okay, we can do two damage, but it still lives. It's wounded though. And now, She's gonna move one space and she's gonna uh, do the brain damage, which I wanted to save for the giant, but it's not gonna happen now. And I'm gonna roll an eight here, and that's enough to kill the, uh, 
Uh, it's probably enough. I'm not sure about it. So we can roll five dice. Uh, that is just... Well, it is. It is enough. It's a, it's a poor roll again, but it has a, a intelligence of, of, of zero. So these two doesn't count, but I still do three damage, which is just enough to kill it. So again, no, it's not just enough. It was clearly enough to kill it. Okay. So again, it was a disastrous fight. It was horrible. Um, It's, uh, I was extremely unlucky during this mission. I'm gonna call the mission here. I'm gonna continue playing the game. I'm, um, I don't know, maybe, hmm. I'm not sure if I actually, the, the problem is I have no more money and I'm very, very bad equipped. So I might, cons I might consider continuing, but I don't even know what happens uh, now, what the, what the results are. Maybe I'm also, um, starting a new campaign or something. This is, this is very, very bad. We didn't manage to do anything here. Um, so was it because the game is too hard? I don't think so. I think I was simply extremely unlucky. The blunder here, which hit the dwarf, was a total disaster. Um, the, the whole combat was ridiculously bad. We managed to draw... Uh, A lot of these cards, which constantly gave additional reinforcement points to this guy, so he could play creature after creature after creature. That was so bad. And, um, yeah, I mean, what can I say? I, I was extremely unlucky, in my opinion, during this fight. The only one was good that, that when, I fought, when I fought the, the spiders that attacked from, me, from this side, that was going really, really well. I couldn't complain here, but uh, already with the first attack it was really bad. The poisonous, um, I mean, the thing is, if I take a healing potion, I might even consider continuing, but the problem is I don't have any fortune left. So when the giant hits me, I'm dead. And otherwise I could have canceled it with, I could have canceled two hits with fortune, but now hmm, I simply die when the giant hits me. So I don't know, I don't know what to do here, honestly. I'm in an extremely bad position. The other problem I have is I'm down to two bucks. I can roll actually, I could now roll and see if I get a little more money, but I cannot even afford the in for everybody right now. Okay, that gives me two more bucks for the for the dead spiders, but this is not looking good anymore. So I gotta think about if I wanna continue this. Um, I'm not sure. If I continue this adventure, maybe face the giant, but does it make a lot of sense anymore? I don't think so. I had to use the brain damage. I have only three spells. I can only basically spell, spend these two spells and no, 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 that's not going to work out. I'm not going to go for the giant anymore. I had a look at him. I had a look at his card. He's got 40 life points and he does 10 damage, uh, 10 dice damage. He's got a pretty poor fighting value of three, but still, um, uh, it's not gonna happen, right? I mean, I'm not gonna win that. If I could have, if I could have canceled two of his hits with him, and that was what I was speculating, uh, with all these potions or so, I might have been able to do it. I really thought about it. I calculated it through, and I thought it looked not so bad. Um, I could have taken the strength potion, which would have given me an additional two damage with the axe for a couple of actions, I think for three actions, and I could have taken the heroic potions, which would have given me for two turns, I think, an additional action. So I could have attacked twice, I could have done the wardens in addition, so I would have had a plus three modifier against the giant. I was really set up for this guy, but um, yeah, sadly we won't see this because 
now I'm not in the shape to do it anymore. These two guys, or these three ants, they were just too brutal for me, which is really a shame. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm simply going to move out of this dungeon and uh, therefore, I don't know, I don't know how to continue. I got to check, um, but I'm going to read the last, uh, I'm going to read the failed uh, result here. Here's the thing, I might consider going back, recovering, I've got enough, I've got enough money to go with two guys, with her and with her, to the inn, or with him, so these two would be fit again, and he didn't spend that many resources. And then we could go back in, oops, and give it another try. Um, that is possible. If we're more lucky, it's not that bad. He lost his crossbow, which is really, really bad. But, um, okay, I mean, he still got his short bow. I don't know. That, that could be an option. I don't know. Hard to tell. I got to think about it. Uh, so for now, I think I'm going to load this up. Hope to see you on the next video or on lonesomegamer.com. Bye.